Hello everyone out there and welcome back to the Hardwell City channel. Today I want to hijack you into the realms of electrophysics. This is because I, um, I devised um, a new concept for measuring static electric fields. And I had some studies on the classical electrical um, field mill, which is a common approach uh, and also today a common industrial approach for measuring static electrical fields. But, but I also learned some ideas from the Wimshurst machine, which is, which is the principle that is capable of um, magnifying the energy of electrical charges and collect charges. And um, so I devised some kind of hybrid between those two ideas and principles. And that's uh, my approach for electrical field mill. It has some advantages and some disadvantages I want to show you now. And it's quite um, interesting to, to deal with those concepts because this is, these are the basic laws of physics, you know. And I think it's um, a very good um, lesson for everyone. Um, to keep your brain busy with such ideas. <clears throat> this is good stuff because it's science. So, okay, so let's first let's make plain the principle of my idea. Okay, so now let's first start with the first item in the chain. How can electrical field can be measured principally? Well, it's not, so, it's not that hard. Just imagine you would have an uh, electrical surface, a plane, made out of metal, so it's conductive. And let's imagine under this first sheet of metal we would have another one, partly covered by the upper one. <coughs> so, and let's Imagine we would have some kind of connectors and a switch. And let's imagine that this lower sheet of metal is grounded against earth. So, now let's say we have electrical field, an ambient electrical field coming from here. And let's say the direction of electrical field is in a way that it repels electrons. So what would happen? First, let's say this uh, connection here is closed, so both sheets of metal are electrically connected. Now we have this ambient electrical field. This electrical field pushes an electromotive force on the charge carriers, which are electrons floating around here on the electric sheet. Um, the force of the electric field forces those electrons um, to go down into the earth because the direction of the field is in a way that it repels electrons. So electrons start floating here through this connection to the uh, lower sheet of metal which is grounded. And now imagine that we would um, open the switch. What would happen? We have a loss of electrons we could experience here by the um, influence of electrical field. So when we open the switch and we would take away those upper sheet of metal, those loss of electrons would remain. That means we had a lack of charges here on the surface of this um, conductive sheet and thus um, we had a positive net charge here on the sheet and the positive net charge is proportionally to the force of the electrical field. So this is the first way, the first element in the chain to measure electrical field, how to, to get a measurable value which uh, corresponds to the force of the electrical field. Okay. Now let's take away the electrical field because it has uh, uh, not any importance anymore because we also we already have this, this charge here, this lack of electrons resulting in a positive net charge. And these both plates are not interconnected anymore. Um, when you take a second look at this you can see that those two plates are forming a capacitor, a charge capacitor. 
and the capacitor it has a capacity, uh, capacity depending on the surface of those plates and um, in respect of the distance between these two plates. Um, when you take the, one of the basic formulas for a capacitor, you can see that the voltage you have on a capacitor is defined by this formula. The voltage is defined by the charge that is uh, on the capacitor, on this electrical plates, and um, to the capacity. And the capacity itself depends on the area of those plates and on the distance. The distance is the distance between those two plates. Let's call it D. So, if we now um, would take our hands and grab this upper um, sheet of metal and push it away from um, the lower surface, which still is grounded and remains in place, what would happen? We would increase the distance between those two plates. Because the capacity The capacity of a capacitor is the electrical base constant epsilon null epsilon r, the surface of the plates and the distance between the two plates. So if we increase the distance, um, we um, decrease the capacity, or you can say it in another words, the voltage you have on the capacitor is proportional to the distance between those two plates. So that means by um, enlarging the distance between those two plates, the voltage will rise because we put more energy in the system, because we act with, our f with the force of our hands against the force of the electric field. So we put energy in the system. And this energy is stored in a form of um, increased uh, voltage. So this is a magnification of the original values we measured um, of the electrical field by gaining a charge. And now comes the last part. By taking away this charge plate we can connect it to another capacitor and the charge of this plate will flow into the capacitor as long as the voltage um, let's say in this capacitor here between those still in place remaining ground plate and this, um, this moving plate is greater than the already um, yielded um, voltage generated by those collecting charges here in this um, real capacitor which is a real capacitor, yes, it's a, it's a real component, electrical component. So, by doing this over and over and over again, we are collecting an increasing amount of charges up to the point where the voltage in this capacitor is exactly the same voltage as you have in this capacitor when the plane gets, this, this conductive plane gets in contact with this upper point of the capacitor. And the charge is depending on the electrical field, of course, and namely on the distance we bridge between, uh, by, um, by pulling um, or by, by, by um, removing this sheet of metal from those, this place into this place. <coughs> so this is a direct proportionality. And we can, in the end, measure here voltage which uh, is directly proportional to the uh, ambient electric field. And you have an amplification here of the original electrical value of the electric field um, by only applying, let's say, mechanical means. You don't need any electronic um, amplifier for this, uh, which means noise and electrical infer interference and something like that. It's just but plainly using the basic principles of electrophysics. So, um, 
to be sure that this concept um, is not working, not only working theoretically but also practically, um, I made some kind of test setup here. You can see. Um, here I have a um, rotating disc. I can switch on. It's driven by motor. And you can see I have some segments on this disc. It's, uh, it's just uh, aluminum foil. And um, these segments are isolated from each other. And I have two brushes here. Um, I show okay. you. So here you can see a plug. This plug is connected via this cable. Um, let's switch over the camera. With a grounding connector on my power supply. This is connected to, to ground. <coughs> and um, this wire here is also connected to ground and is um, terminated by this brush here, this little brush, but this is just um, some copper strain wire where I pull the isolation from it. And here you can see there's another layer of aluminum foil which is also connected to ground, which forms the capacitor with the respective um, segments of the rotating disc. And as I said, this um, rounded part of aluminum sheet. So we have a capacitor. Um, each segment rotating here is forming. <coughs> so the idea is that the electrical field, which comes from from above, um, pushes the the charge carrier away or attracts them. Both is possible. And by this brush, those two um, foils here are interconnected because this is the same potential as this one here. So this brush is connected against ground. And because this disc is rotating, at this point here, um, the brush has no contact anymore to this rotating segment. So the induced charge here on the segment stays isolated here and is transferred with the moving this up to this point where the second brush here comes into play and takes away the charge and puts it into a fixed capacitor which is this one here you can see <coughs> and in the following sequence those this discharge discharge segment is rotated back here to this position above the uh, grounded foil, forms again a new capacitor, gets influenced by the electrical field, gets new charge carriers, and the whole process starts over again. And we have four segments here working simultaneously so that we can gain more power. And you can see there's nothing more in it in this position that the uh, capacitor and a voltage meter. To show you the so readings. before we start to measure real electrical field values, just take a look at this device when it is switched on without working. So this is a voltage meter reading, so you can see without the motor running, you have a voltage of zero here, <coughs> and this is um, this is reasonable. When we take wait. <coughs> And we take a piece of plastic like this here and uh, this cushion which is covered with fur and we rub it we can get a reasonable amount of static electricity and I'm going to do this now and you can see we have a small impulse which is um, which is um, absolutely plausible because when I apply electrical field here on these segments, um, we have an um, instant inrush of um, electrons into the voltmeter and that gives an impulse, but it's um, also um, gone very fast, as you can see. Okay, in annual readings you can see that we have almost 0 volts, about 1.4, 1.5 millivolts. Okay, so let's go back with the camera. <coughs> Now let's switch on the motor drive. And now you can see 
the voltage is going up around 31, 32 millivolts. <coughs> so this seems to be a static electrical fuse we are currently measuring. Um, there's another possibility we have to take into account, namely that those voltages are generated by friction. But if you would have friction here in the system, uh, we would have a continuously process of generating charges and the voltage would rise up more and more, up to the point where a charge, a, a, a discharge um, spark would occur. But this is not the case, the voltage is more or less stable. So um, I don't think that um, this voltage here is generated by friction. <coughs> well, now I take this plastic bag here and I'm going to rub it against the fur on this cushion and let's see if we can measure something. Yeah, you can see we have an uprise on the voltage about up to 170 millivolts. When I take away the plastic sheet again, it's going down to the original level. <coughs> Let's do it again. So, <clears throat> it seems there's something to measure. Another thing I obeyed um, by using um, another type of electrical field measurement device is that by walking on the ground, my feet are walking, around, uh, walking on the ground, I take charge carriers with me on my shoes because I have plastic soles. And this gives a constant, constant up and down moving of electrical field. And that's the same effect here, when I um, take up my feet and put them down again, you can see. Let's go a little bit nearer to the camera. And you can see the reading. Now I take my feet up and down. And you can see the voltage is varying very much. So when I switch off the motor drive again, the reading is going down to zero. Okay, I hope you had some fun, like I did, and you learned a little bit, and also about the process of um, proving your theories in real life practice. So for me, um, those findings are good enough to follow this path more and the next thing will be to um, make a step coming from the uh, tester up to some kind of prototype device and to see if we can um, get reliable results by applying this in, in the daily usage. So let's see, I will keep you informed. Thanks for now and bye.